Well, I uh, just want to say thank you for coming and um, hope you feel welcome here. If you have any comments or questions, you were given a bulletin on the way in. Pastor Frank's name and phone number and email is right on the front and the back, so just get him. He is the man. He can help you. That's right. But no, once again, we are here to celebrate our LHS uh, seniors graduating class and not so LHS, uh, you know, that did it at home and virtually. So uh, we are here to honor them, and what we want to do is to share a little short message with them so you're not going to be that late. Uh, Where's Daryl? You're not going to be late for lunch, Daryl. I've got 17 minutes or 18. But anyway, I want us to concentrate on something that's very simple, that's very, we know, something we know, but I want it to uh, address the students in a way, you know, when, when we're out in our lives, when we're doing life, we find that we're going to constantly be bombarded with what people think about you. Are we clear? I mean, even as adults, we find that out. You know, whether it's your family, your friends, your acquaintances, those uh, str- even strangers sometimes will tell you, hey, man, that's a cool shirt you got on. And I'll say, thanks, that's Hula Girls. You know, they'll, they're always, I mean, it seems like everyone's willing to give you their opinion, isn't it? I mean, opinions are, everyone has one, we know that, and, but we, we are, we're going to constantly, I think for you, especially the, the young people, hear things about yourself, um, that you're maybe too big, maybe you're too small, maybe you're uh, too shy, maybe Preston, you're too uh, silly, maybe uh, uh, you're too smart, Jaden, uh, maybe you're too stupid, Preston again. Okay, you know, we're always going to get that, right? Um, Constantly hear this. It's impossible. It's impossible to go through life without hearing what other people think about you, whether it's good or bad. Okay, so, you know, pretty much everyone you come in contact with is going to give you their opinion. They're going to tell you a little bit about what they think. Um, But here, this is what I want you to hear, graduates. Listen to me. The most important opinion is whose? The the Lord's. God's. Okay? He has the most important opinion. So based on what we what I've read in the the Bible and and many of you have, I God thinks a lot of me and you. A lot of us. He thinks very highly of us. Okay? Um, The Bible talks about it. God thinks you're worth fighting for. We're going to look at a scripture in the book of Exodus, but in the book of Exodus chapter 14, we find where the nation of Israel, the people of God, were led by Moses to to leave. And at one point, the Lord had to say this to them, or Moses had to say this to them. The Lord will fight fight for you. You must be silent. You must be quiet. And you know, when, when, these, when this group of people were, were leaving Egypt because they were in bondage for so many years, they were fleeing with faith, they were following the, the plan that Moses gave them, we're leaving this place, they get to the Dead Sea, you know, Moses, or God's like, or Moses is like, what am I going to do now? And God said, just hold up your sign, tell the people to go through, because I'm going to harden the hearts of the Egyptians, they're going to follow you in, and then I'm going to crush them too, because today... Egyptians are going to know that I am the Lord. See, the Lord will fight for you. And, and if you're willing to let him fight for you, you're going to be successful. You're going you're to get through life, even though it's going to be hard. You know, so here's the deal. God doesn't need you, but he wants you. If you think about that for a minute, there's nothing that I can do to add to God. <laughs> you know, but... He wants me. He wants to know me. He wants to understand how I feel and talk to him. He wants to know you. Um, He didn't send Jesus. He didn't send his son uh, to just come to die for you for no reason, to forgive your sins. He He didn't need to do that. He didn't have to do that. He wanted to. It was important to him that you could be with him, that I could be with him, right? Um. So... I'm going to talk about four things that I want us to uh, think about today. And one is 
God thinks that you are a masterpiece. Now, we're going to look at Scripture, and it's in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. If you wanted to uh, look in, in your Bible, we're going to have it on the screen for you as well, um, legible even. It says this, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in heaven in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith and this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift. Not from works, so that no man, so that no one can boast. Last verse, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Let me just lead us in a word of prayer. Father, we praise your name. We thank you, God, for your word, for the promises that we have in it. Lord, speak to us today in a clear way that we might be effective for the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, uh, another word for um, handiwork, you know, uh, uh, is, is masterpiece. And that's who you are. You're a masterpiece to God. And I know sometimes, I know I don't. I don't feel like it. You know, sometimes I think what others say to me, they don't feel like it either. <laughs> Am I clear? Okay. So, you know... But, but the difference is that God says that I am. And I, and I have a weight. I, I take weight in that. Because, you know, I, I do care about what people think because I want them to see Christ, right? But God sees me as his own, as perfect and righteous, all because of the cross, amen? Not because of anything that I can do. We just read it. Okay, so I don't know about you, but, but sometimes I feel like I'm not a conqueror. I feel like, Life is too hard. I feel like many times, uh, maybe you students are going to feel this. <laughs> when uh, you're moving away from your parents, uh, there's going to be some good times. You know, uh, not have to do what they tell you to do all the time. But I, I promise you, you're soon going to find out that your parents uh, make life a little easier than you're uh, about to experience when you go off to college. Some of you going to colleges, classes will be difficult, you know. Um, there will be failure, maybe, a, maybe at least one test, right, Lily? She's like, no, no test, I'm going to fail, right? Uh, but certainly, you know, we're, we're, we're supposed to do our best. We're supposed to do our, uh, perform our, at our best ability. That's important, especially as, as believers. Uh, we want to do our best, but, but for God... You know, here's the reality. We live in a fallen world, amen? Everyone are, have fallen short of the sin all because of Adam and Eve. That's why we we're born into sin. There's nothing we can do to help that. If you don't believe me, come up here Monday through Friday, go over here in the nursery where they're, they can't even hardly crawl. And, you know, if the, if the other baby has the bottle or the toy that they want, they're going to bite them or come kick them or scratch them or just take it from them. And I know some of the parents, and I don't believe that stuff's acting like that. I don't think their parents are acting like that at home. You know, they're, they're not seeing that. So it's just born into us, you know. It's just the way it is. And you know, our minds and body, they'll fail us. We've seen that. Um, we're all born with the sin nature, and, and uh, we're, we're prone to sin, whether it's in thought, uh, a word, or an action that you did. You know, it, 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 it's the result of it. And so, as a result, failure isn't just an option. What's it going to be? It's inevitable. You're, you're going to fail. It's going to be a problem at one point. Um, so, I want to share real quick uh, uh, four things, facts, about failure. Okay? I just shared one. Everyone fails many, many times. You don't have to feel alone when you do. You know, when I was a kid, I was banging out Sean Perry about uh, his dad used to harass us. Well, he did. We had orange fights. And once we had orange fights with the neighbors, 
and ran them back, then Scott would capture us and, 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 and put us in the garage and, you know, torture us, try to demand where everybody else was. And, you know, we played that every time, and we failed every time. There was no win for us, but we kept trying. We kept trying. And, you know, he didn't hurt us. He thought we were going to get hurt. But, you know, I, I, you know, failure is usually, is only final if you give up. Right? Failure is only final if you give up. So the Bible tells us in, in Galatians 6, 9 that, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, I didn't put that on the screen, but we must never get tired of doing good because it's, it's what gives up, it's, it's, if, if we give up the struggle, it's probably going to get harder at it. Um, the third thing, failure is the path to success even if I am humble and willing to learn from it. I shared the story, you know. Um, we humbly stopped trying to <laughs> resist God. <laughs> you know, that's the only one I could come up with, by the way. But, you know, we, we need to refuse. This is, this is what we need to do. We need to refuse to compare our failures to others' success. You think about that for a minute. Look what it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 12. I had 1 Corinthians on the screen earlier, and it made no sense. Uh, but anyway, for we do not dare classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. But in measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves to themselves, they lack what? Understanding. So the next time you feel down uh, or stressed or anxious or uh, just remember that you're not the... The only, uh, it's not the only time you're going to go through this and, and you're loved by the Creator. You know, we sang these songs earlier. Uh, God loves us just the way we are, right? Um, no, matter, no matter what. The third thing, uh, you are loved and accepted as is by God. I shared earlier, we used, I used to sell cars at Langford, and we sold them old, old cars. And uh, sometimes we sold them as is. In other words, if it broke down by the time you got to you know, two blocks, sorry. You know, we did our best, but then, you know, we didn't never do that because we always took care of them. But that's how God takes us, as is. In all your struggle, in all your anxiety, in all your failure, He takes us just how you are. Uh, Jeremiah 31 3 tells us like this I have loved. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued to extend faithful love to you. I think we all agree that there are times where we don't feel very loved in our lives. Um, Times when we don't feel like I've even felt where I don't feel like I deserve love. You know, because I've done something or said something uh, that was harmful to others. But no matter matter who else is in your life, no matter whether it's a wonderful family with great loved ones and tons of loyal, uh, loving friends, you know, maybe you had parents that really didn't care a whole lot about you, maybe you didn't really have a lot of friends, Um, maybe um, you really can't think of a whole lot of good things in your past, but listen to me, God loves you and you're his masterpiece. You are created by Him, for Him, in His image. And there's nothing that can rob you of that if you know Christ as Savior. See, we talk, I like to talk a lot about God's mercy and His grace. Because when I think of my past, I'm like, whew, you know, wow, thanks for that. But God's wrath is real, folks. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's not good. I mean, God's doing everything He can to put circumstances in your life to to draw you to Him. But I'm fearful that, you know, if you don't, if one of us here today don't know Christ, we might experience His wrath. And look, I've read a lot of the Old Testament and those stories of where 
They walked around Jericho and destroyed the city. And you know what else they did? They didn't leave anything living. The animals, everything. God's wrath is real, folks. And if you're not following, if you're not looking to Him, I'm just praying for you. I pray that if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you come today and you say yes to Jesus. Because this is the way that we'll find true love. Okay? Um, he, he, God doesn't just love you. He, he loves you, we said, with an everlasting love. I mean, He loves you just the way you are. When you mess up, He loves you. When, when you are doing life your way, Instead of his, he still loves you. That's what's important to understand. Last thing that I want us to share, the last and final thing, God thinks you are delightful. Zephaniah 3.17 says it like this. The Lord your God is among you, a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will be quiet in his love. Quick, I'm sorry. He will be quick in his love, and he will delight in you with singing. <laughs> wow, man, can you, can, you, can you wrap your mind around that? I mean, the mighty warrior who saves takes delight in you. God, the creator of all things, takes delight in you, in me. I mean, I, don't know, I can't think for you, but I can think for me, and I'm like, wow, that doesn't make sense. Because there were times when my mom and dad, I really for sure believed that they hated me <laughs> at that moment, you know. <laughs> um, but God's love is different. Um, it, it would be nice to hear uh, from someone that you are worth delighting in, right? But from God, that's just plain incredible. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, we often allow what other people think of us or say to us to shape how we think of ourselves. And listen, folks, uh, teenagers... We're, we're in a, uh, a time in our culture and society that death seems like it's an okay way out to people. Suicide's growing because of hopelessness, because of lack of feeling loved, because sometimes we're just not good at loving each other, you know? But we must remember that God loves us even in our sin. What does it say in Romans? Yet while we were still sinners, <laughs> Christ died for us. It's very important. So we, the, um, you need to stop thinking about yourself like that. You need to remember and, and remind yourself of what I tell the kids every day. It's God's Word. Uh, it's the Bible. It's God's Word. It tells us everything we need to know. There's no mistakes. There's the truth in here. Okay? Um. We're, we're, we're in a serious identity crisis in, in our nation, in our, in our, in our country, um, in many different ways. Um, it might look like making A's one minute and C's the next, you know. Um, now, now you're on the C honor roll. <laughs> you know, it might look like you struggle making friends in a new place when you go off to college. But whatever it looks like, know this. Christ sees you as delightfully, delightful and accepted. Conquered, a conqueror, and a masterpiece. Think about that. Completely worth dying for. I know we hear this so many times in our life, and it's like, gosh, it's the same thing. But you know, how many times does it need to be said before you grab a hold to it and take it for real in your life? I hear that the average American hears the gospel of Jesus Christ an average of seven times before they turn to Jesus. I don't believe about 75% of the statistics I read, but that's just what I read. And it's obvious we hear it a lot, don't we people? There's places in our world that know they never heard about Jesus. They never heard about this masterpiece that they are. You know, um, your identity is not rooted in your performance. Your identity is deeper and stronger and more durable and more Glorious than anything that your peers or your teachers or anybody else tells you. Okay, um, your, your purpose is found in living life for His glory, Jesus' glory, and, and living out the truths of who you are because of what Christ did. 
And so, as our um, worship team comes forward and prepares us for our invitation, maybe, maybe, maybe you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you've just been allowing the world around you to beat you up and make you feel unimportant or not loved. And you just need to come up here and pray and maybe say, Lord God, thanks for the, the reminder. Or maybe you've never understood what you need to know about Christ because of whatever reason. Maybe you, maybe you uh, didn't know that your sin can be forgiven. And what's that mean? That means that the, the, the things that you do against God can be forgiven. All your sin and, and all your garbage in your life can be forgotten not by your friends or your family but by God and then your life will be secured in him right in Jesus Christ Colossians 3.3 3. it says you are hidden your life is you have died and your life is hidden in Christ nothing can take you away so um, maybe, maybe uh, you haven't ever said yes to Jesus you need to come forward today let's stand maybe you just need to pray you can come forward too. Maybe, maybe you just want to join the church because you've been coming and you've heard Pastor Frank's many, many messages and, and, and you just like and you believe that we are the part of body of Christ that you want to come and worship with. You come.